This is a video to show how to uh, trace and cut the clay pattern um, for our mosaic fish. What we're going to do is take this tool, it's called the lace tool, it's got a blunt end and a sharp end, and we use the blunt end to trace our pattern. So the easiest way of doing this is to put it on the line that you're tracing and pull. And I'm going to show you how it leaves the line. So that's going to be the line that we cut along later. So, and also you can take back that plastic to see whether you've successfully created an indentation. So Notice again, that's leaving a really nice outline. And I don't need to do the whole thing in one continuous motion. We can do it in drag, 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 drag. And you'll see how that works just as well as a continuous line. Done with, oh, there's a spot that I didn't get very well. I'm gonna do it again. We are never going to move the clay off of the board. It's always going to stay on the board. And if we want to lift up the fish and work with it, we lift up the whole board. Or if we want to get to a certain area, we can rotate the whole thing. The way we cut this is we take the sharp end of this tool and you have it actually touch the board. So notice, but I'm not cutting the board. I'm just dragging it along like it's a pencil. So I'm going to come along the line of the fish and then cut out in a way cutting along the line and then out. And the natural thing that happens if you do small sections is that you're doing enough force that it just gets rid of the excess. So cut and pull away, cut along the line and pull away, cut along the line and pull away, cut along the line and pull away. And this can be done the whole way around. Anything that's pointy and narrow, it's easy to um, kind of ruin the shape of the clay because it's really soft, super soft. That's why we're not moving the fish off of the boards. So, um, Step number one was tracing it and cutting it. And step number two is to smooth the edges. So I have a bowl of water here. You can take a finger and, or several fingers, and I'm touching the, uh, up, the upper edge of this fish. So I'm not doing the sides, I'm just doing the part you can see, which is along the top. And what we're aiming for here is that it's kind of softened, so it's not a sharp edge, not a cliff. It's a So one thing that you could do at this point is take the sponge and really, really wring it out so there's no, no, um, no drips coming in. You can smooth the clay slightly, and I'm just dragging it really, really, really lightly along the top. This is absolutely not necessary, but some people like to have smooth clay, and that's how you do that. So that's step number one completed. At this point, you must get permission from one of the um, instructors, one of the artists, to go ahead and choose your color and to proceed to coloring. So there's gonna be a whole bunch of these glazes available for you. I'm gonna have you choose one or two main colors for your fish. And the way you do this coloring is you take a, a brush and wet it, and it doesn't have to be soppy wet, it's better that it's a little more on the dry side. And I'm gonna take some of this red and I'm gonna put it along the body of the fish. And I think I'm gonna do the bottom in red and the, the top of the body of this fish in yellow. So I'm gonna start off with one color. The way this works best is you really kind of load, load the brush. And you're not really brushing the surface of the clay, you're kind of dragging all of the excess color off of it as you go along the clay. So I'm gonna do the whole fish in a red and then layer on some yellow, which might end up giving me a bit of an orange when we're done. But we're not mixing the colors together. We're gonna to do layers on top of each other. So we're gonna do one layer and then dry. So the rule for today is you must dry your color between, between um, 
layers. And the way we draw this is with a hair dryer. So I'm going to stop talking for a bit. It's going to go from being shiny to being dull and chalky, so that's when you know that it's dry enough. So because I didn't put red on the top of the fish, I'm going to go ahead and start putting some yellow in that area. So I'm going to take this slightly wetted brush and take the yellow and start applying it along the top there. And I think I want his face to be a little bit yellow, so I'm going to do that. And that ended up doing some kind of linear stuff that was kind of neat. So it's picking up the structure that's underneath that we uh, used the, um, that blunt instrument to make those lines, those indentations. Those are starting to really look nice. They're giving us structure for this fish. And I'm getting a little blending. But the yellow and the red work beautifully as a blend. So I'm gonna dry that. So I'm testing, yeah, so touching it, it doesn't, it doesn't come off, so that yellow has been uh, integrated. If you want to do some blending, get your, um, get your brush a little bit wet and go back to the area where the colors meet, and instead of getting these harsh lines between them, you can soften up the connection. You got to do this very gently, so do it and see what happens, and use just the amount of pressure that is necessary. If you do too much, it'll scrape paint off, which you may want to do in some places. So that's that. Now I'm going to dry that one more time. And now I'm going to introduce you to this wonderful thing. These are squeeze bottles of that paint. It's the same kind of paint, glaze. And what I would need you to do is to make sure it's shaken up. So you've got to shake it really hard. So I'm going to show you here. When you squeeze this bottle, it puts drops of um, color. So test it before you do it. And if you want to do a line, you need to test how much pressure you need to do to get the particular line you want. More pressure gives you a thicker line. Thinner pressure gives you a thinner line. So you can have quite a bit of control, but you must practice. Otherwise, you're gonna have just blobs. So one thing about these, um, uh, these salmon is they have these beautiful dots all over their bodies. And you can do dots using these um, squeeze bottles and it makes for a beautiful way of getting color on that's actually a lot easier than uh, brushes. And having different sizes is fine. It's kind of actually kind of realistic compared to what these things look like in the wild. And I can use dots to create this line that goes along the body of the fish. It's kind of a way of doing a line, but without having to be very careful about the line. That's kind of cool, I think. So I'm gonna do a couple more colors and mix it up. So I also have this green here. Again, shake it up, and I have my needle here. If it's blocked, you use this needle to open up the opening of the bottle. I'm doing a good job. There. So we're going to do a yellow one. So the base color, you need to have at least two layers to have it actually have color and not just show the color of the clay underneath, which is kind of a white. All right, so I'm going to give this guy a nice, big, beautiful round. Uh-oh. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to back up from a mistake. So now he's got a mole on his nose. We're going to take a sponge and just take that off. And I'm going to take the black and put a dot for the eye. 
And I think I'm gonna call that quits. I might wanna add a little bit more yellow on that fit and make it a brighter yellow. So I'm gonna do that. And the last layer doesn't have to be dried. So you can just leave it as it is and let it um, air dry without having to use the hair dryers. So I'm making that top fin really, really yellow and maybe a little bit of matching over on the tail here. And I think that's enough. <laughs>